Come and see what everyone's talking about. La ilaha illallah. Allah. There's only one God and Jesus was his messenger. Allah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. You are watching The Dean Show, and we are here trying to help you develop a better understanding about Islam, which is the fastest growing way of life in the world today, yet most misunderstood. But after people dig a little bit, and they start to join us here weekly on The Dean Show, they get inspired, they get happy, and many even accept this wonderful way of life that was lived by all the messengers of God, because they all brought and taught the same message to acquire peace by submitting your will to the owner of peace, the one God. And today, the crucial question many people start to ask when we provide all the rational, logical evidence that Jesus, peace be upon him, was a mighty messenger. And in no way was he divine with God. In no way did he call people to worship him. People will ask, well then what was he, a liar, a lunatic, or was he Lord? He had to be one of them. Well, we're going to be addressing this very important question when we come back, we'll be answering with Dr. Gerald Dirks, who's a former Christian preacher, teacher, deacon who finished from the prestigious Harvard University with the divinity degree. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Dean, Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God, and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. And peace upon you, brother. Thank you for joining us here again on The Dean Show. Oh, my pleasure. We are going to get straight into the topic because time is short. Mm -hmm. And we want to, for those who want to know a little bit more about you, they can go to thedeanshow.com. You have your own private section. We've done several shows with you in the past. You have your biography there so people can read and learn about who you were, what you've done. But today the crucial question is many people are asking when we provide all the evidence from the Bible, mm -hmm. from the Quran, the verbatim word of God, that Jesus, and no Muslim is a Muslim unless he believes in Jesus, he was indeed a mighty messenger of God who called mm -hmm. people to the same message, worship the Creator, not his creation. Then people ask, well, then what was he? Was he a liar? Was he a lunatic, crazy? If not, then he had to be Lord. What do we have to say? Well, you left off the fourth choice, which is none of the above. None of the above. None of the above. And as Muslims, that's certainly our answer. He wasn't a liar. He wasn't a lunatic. And no, he wasn't our Lord, if by any stretch of the imagination you mean to imply divinity. How about, ma how about master teacher? Couldn't Lord mean that also? Uh, well, they, they're not implying that. But can a Lord be a, like, you know, like you have like today, you know, have Lord, judges are called Lords. How yeah. is it according well, to the Bible? Well, yeah. Whether, whether it's with a capital L or a lowercase yeah. L. Yeah. In, in terms of a master or a teacher, certainly, uh, we Muslims would have no objection no to, objection to Jesus that. being referred to that way. But as a divine son no, of God, no, no. not at yeah. all. No, that, that's where we would draw the line. So what do we do now? And, um, well, um, you know, I think we, we uh, point out that we certainly respect Jesus. We accept him as one of the messengers of God, bringing revelation from God to us. But we do not accept him as, as being uh, God or being divine uh, himself. Now, some people will go and look at the Bible. Now, I want to make a note. Correct me. You're our teacher yeah. here. You're a Bible scholar. You know this book quite well, very well. You spent years and years and years, and you got a master's in the divinity in it. We as Muslims once have consciously chosen to submit to the one God. We believe that there is part of uh, some of God's word in the Bible, but there's also sure. the word of prophets, historians, mm -hmm. and people we don't even know who are writing. Is that true? Right. I mean, uh, you know, many of the books of the Bible were, were anonymously written, as far as we know. Um, and sure, we, we believe that there's probably a lot of divine revelation to be found in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, but there's probably also some other things as well. That, that we can attribute to God. Correct. Okay, but now to entertain even some of these verses that people will bring, because mm -hmm. I think that in any court of law, if you can't produce the witness, the case is thrown out. Mm -hmm. But we're still entertaining this. So some people will say, you know what, and we've done a show on this in the past. They can mm -hmm. go to thedeanshow.com. It's called, Is Jesus God? And mm -hmm. you clearly, you've shown through history, mm -hmm. the early Christian sects and 
this was another myth yeah. that many people would try to say, no, all the Christians at that time believed it. This is also a myth? Absolutely. You know, we, we know there were Jewish Christian groups uh, that flourished, including uh, the Church of Jerusalem under James, um, the righteous. Um, these were Jewish Christian groups. They denied the divinity of Jesus. Uh, the Ibionites would be another one, the Nazarenes, not to be confused with the modern denomination of the same name, the Elkasites. Uh, you know, these were groups that basically denied uh, the divinity of Jesus. Now, in the past show, the one I mentioned is Jesus God. We went over some of the common arguments or verses people will use, and you basically, you explained them in their context and show that, no, th th these are more like, kind of like the, was it the Gorshot? Gorshot test. Gorshot test. Yeah. Where it's nothing explicit, it's something that you can deduce whatever you want to deduce. Yeah, you, you project onto it your own, from your own self. Yeah, but now there's a few that we didn't cover. Okay. So one will mention, like, let's say that, you know, they took up stones in the Bible to stone him mm -hmm. because he was claiming he was God. What mm -hmm. do you have to say about this? Well, let's look at the actual passage. Yeah. You know, and, and, and let's look at it in context. And what you're referring to is from the 10th chapter of John. Yeah. Um, the Jews took up stones against, uh, uh, took up stones again to stone him. This is uh, John chapter 10, verses 31 through 36. Jesus replied, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these are you going to stone me? The Jews answered, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, though only a human being, are making yourself God. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If those to whom the words of God came were called gods, and the scripture cannot be annulled, can you say that the one whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world is blaspheming, because I said, I am God's son? That's John chapter 10, verses 31 through 36. Now, if you're going to take that passage as a statement that Jesus is claiming divinity, mm -hmm. you're making a number of assumptions. Yes. And, and let's just delineate what those assumptions are. First of all, you're assuming that John or whoever wrote the Gospel of John is recording the passage accurately. That's the first assumption. Secondly, you're assuming that Jesus actually said this. That's the second assumption. And in fact, there are some reasons to doubt that Jesus actually said this. So, for example, when he says in uh, this quotation, I said you are gods, he's quoting here from the Old Testament. But what's fascinating is he's quoting from the Greek Septuagint. Yes. He's not quoting from the Hebrew Masoretic text. He's quoting from the Greek because the words are identical to the Greek Septuagint, not to the Hebrew. Now, why would Jesus, peace be upon him, in Palestine in the first century be quoting from the Greek Old Testament instead of from the Hebrew? Hmm. I mean, this raises real questions. Yeah. Secondly, according to the statement as we have it, Jesus answered, is it not written in your law I said you are gods. Well, that reference to your law, the Torah. But the Torah is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Just the five, first five books. Just the first five. That's the Torah. Yeah. And then the second division of Hebrew scriptures, the Nevi'im, and the third division is the Ketuvim. This quotation it actually comes from the 82nd chapter of Psalms, verse 6 through 7. That's not part of the Torah. That's part of the Ketuvim. Now, from all accounts, Jesus was a very learned scholar of uh, Hebrew Scripture. Yes. And for him to make a claim that something's coming from the Torah, when in fact it's coming from the Psalms, is a little hard to understand mm -hmm. how that sort of mistake could be made. So again, that's the second reason we might well question whether Jesus actually even said these words. But the... Th the second uh, thing we need to consider altogether is, does the statement mean Jesus is God? Well, let's look at what he said. Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If those to whom the words of God came were called gods, 
and the scripture cannot be annulled, can you say that the one whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world is blaspheming because I said, I am God's son? He's contrasting, I am God's son, with you are called gods. Well, if you're saying the latter means divinity, God's son, then so does the former. In other words, everybody's God. Yeah. So I think we have to look at the context, context of this, context. of what Jesus is actually saying. Certainly from my reading of it, there's no statement of uh, divinity being claimed. And many others, not just yours, many others would also line up in conjunction with what you're... Yeah, I, again, that's what you were saying before. When, when we start looking at some of this stuff, it's, it's like looking at a Rorschach ink pot. People are going to project onto it. Uh, from them own, their own selves. What their desire is wanting Sure, what they to want to see. see. Okay, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more with Dr. Gerald Dirks here on The Dean Show. No speech is better than to do that, well, to call people to Allah and to do the work. No speech is better. No, nothing is better than that. Is it true that if one person on the Allah giving you the ability to guide someone with Allah's permission, the Creator's permission, that is better than everything in this world? Better than the whole world and everything that's in it. In, in another narration, it's better than the best of wealth. But if we really felt that, Eddie, would we not be give, out giving down? And this is something that we encourage all the MSAs, all the Dawa organizations, the masjids, to get this. We want to print more. We give these to the non-Muslims for free, for free, for free. We want our brothers in humanity to become our brothers in faith. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If Allah is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If Allah is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If Allah is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on The Dean Show with Dr. Gerald Dirks, and we're answering the question, Jesus, peace be upon him, who no Muslim is a Muslim unless he believes in Jesus. We believe mm -hmm. in the miracles that he did, that he gave life to the dead with God's permission, yes. that he healed the sick, that he was indeed a mighty messenger of God, but nowhere in the Bible or any scripture did Jesus ever claim that he was divine, that he was a literal son of God, and you also, in many of other shows, proved historically that many of the Christian sects at that time, there was an adoptionist theory, yes. he was subordinate to God. So the mm -hmm. evidence is there that proves that. They can go to the deanshow.com and look under Dr. Gerald's uh, section, Is Jesus God? Amongst other topics that we did. Now, continuing on, there are also prophecies that people try to link from the Old Testament. Yeah. And the one we want to cover is something in Isaiah. And they'll try to link it back to the New Testament and say, look, 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 look here. The prophecy mm -hmm. came fulfilled, and he's God. Mm -hmm. oh, do you have a specific prophecy in, in the mind? The one in Isaiah that? talking about the kingdom, it'll be on his shoulder. Oh, and... okay. Yeah, uh, this is the ninth chapter of Isaiah, uh, verse 6. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Uh, it's Isaiah 9, That's the verse one. Six. That's the one. Okay, and, and people want to say, well, this is Jesus. And then they say, well, look at that, mighty God. Well, look at the next phrase, everlasting Father. Everlasting Father. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. You can't pick and choose here in this verse. It's not a buffet now. No, no, you take everything that's there. Wonderful Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father. So we're talking about the one God. Well... You know, unless somehow Trinitarians are going to want to claim that Jesus is the Father and not the Son, then you can't really make this piece of Scripture apply to Jesus. And this is, in, in our past show, you said something about this being a heretical statement saying that Jesus was the Father. Or something in that text uh, where, where to believe that Jesus is God, that he's actually God uh, giving and, and not separate in a trinity. If you oh, 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 the, the, Jesus is God, period. Period, yes. Without, without recognizing that Jesus is also 
human. Yes. Yeah, that, that's uh, officially heresy in that's traditional what Christianity. Traditional Christianity. Yeah. 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 yeah, there were three basic positions on the nature of Jesus um, that were fought about theologically in the first few centuries. One was Jesus is God, period. Yeah. The other is Jesus is both God and man simultaneously. That's basically the official position of traditional Christianity. And the third uh, position is Jesus is man, although a man who was selected as a recipient of God's revelation and stood in a special relationship to God. Yeah. So how do you close off this now? This, is, this, is, mm -hmm. this argument is done, the one you just covered, the Isaiah. This is talking about, if you look at and you add those extra words at the end, this is not talking about Jesus? Well, I'm, I'm not adding extra words. This yeah. is from the verse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everlasting Father. He is named Everlasting Father. So this cancels this out now? Well, it certainly cancels out any Trinitarian possibility if you're saying uh, that Jesus is the Father. Okay. I mean, because the Trinitarian concept is He's the Son. This is easy to see. Yeah, that's a blatant contradiction. Again, we covered this before about I am. Another one, again, now that's brought up that before Abraham was, I am. Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. do you got to say about this? Well, again, let's, let's look at the actual verse. Yeah. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. John 8, verse 58. Now, number of assumptions that are being made, and we need to highlight what those assumptions are by those who are saying this somehow shows that Jesus is God. An assumption that some Christians are making here anyway is that when this verse says, I am, before Abraham was, I am, it's referring back to Exodus 3, verse 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. Yeah. And he further said, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. Well, again, we're assuming that that goes back there. We don't know that. That's an assumption. You know, the I am in Exodus is in Hebrew. The I am in John is Greek. We do not know that a literal translation was made from what Jesus would have spoken, which was Aramaic to the Greek. Plus, you know, there are a lot of Bible scholars who say, you know, the I am translation in Exodus is not quite accurate. Mm -hmm. You know, it sort of gets the gist, but uh, it might be more accurate to say um, something on the order of um, I um, bring into being mm -hmm. or something on that order. Mm -hmm. There's about three or four different technical variations of how that uh, phrase can be translated. And again, this is nothing explicit. This is nothing straightforward. Oh, no, God no. doesn't want to beat around the bush and have you like, you know, try to figure it out, you know, give you like hints here and there. No, no, no. And, and, and you know, some people would argue, well, look, if, if Jesus was before Abraham, well, what else could he be yeah. besides God? But again, you're making assumptions. And one of the assumptions that you're making is this there is no such thing as the pre-existence of souls. Yeah. And in point of fact, you know, there are many Muslims who believe that there was pre-existence of souls mm -hmm. for, for all mankind. Yeah. Uh, and they often refer to a verse from the Quran, when your Lord brings offspring from out of the loins of the children of Adam, he makes them first bear witness about themselves by asking them, am I not your Lord? Quran 7, verse 172. Mm -hmm. So pre-existence of souls. Yeah is how that verse is being read by many people. And we have a following hadith. Aisha narrated that Prophet Muhammad said, souls before they became united with bodies were like assembled armies. And afterwards they were dispersed and sent into the bodies of mankind. Yeah. That's from the Mishkat. Mm -hmm. And from the Musnad of Ibn Hanbal, we have another hadith which perhaps we can get to in a moment. Uh, tell us before you get to that now, we, we have a, no go ahead finish this, we have a few more minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, Anas bin Malik said that the prophet said it will be said to a man from the people of the fire on the day of resurrection. If you owned all that is on the earth, would you pay it as ransom? He will reply, yes. God will say, I ordered you with what is less than that when you were still in Adam's loins. That is, associate none with me. And Abu Huraira narrated that the prophet said, 
when God created Adam, he wiped Adam's back and every person that he will create from him until the day of resurrection fell out from his back. So we have this pre-existence of souls. Yeah. So for Jesus to say, before Abraham was, I am, you know, could well be pre-existence of souls. Absolutely. And again, God Almighty is not the author of confusion. He's not trying to confuse it. When God no. Almighty says, worship me alone, right. he would have said Trinity. He would have said crucifixion. I'm dying. But none of this is there. It's clear. Worship the one God, the same God that Jesus worshiped, yes. Moses, Abraham, and the last and final messenger, Prabhupada, and peace be upon him, him alone and not his creation. That's always been the same message. Yes. Tell us now a few more points before we cut to a break. You know, we cover these in, in the other show and people can see it. The topic is Jesus God. You covered it, but some people uh, just briefly touch upon this. The people that didn't see this, and maybe they might not get a chance to go to the website. For beginning was the Word. The Word was the God. No, no, no. That's John 1.1. 1, 1. They mentioned this. This is a big one. For beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The God became flesh. And the beginning was the Word. Yes. And the Word was with God. And the, God and the Word was with, with God. God. Yes. But the, not the Word was God. No. The Word was with with God. Yes. It's, this goes back to what you were just saying, wasn't it? And, and this is, seems like duality, not trinity. Yeah, at this point, I mean, if, you, if you're going to take the word or the logos yeah. as being a divine, um, first of all, you have to deal with that with statement. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, we still haven't gotten to the, the Holy Spirit yeah. of, of Trinitarian Christianity. Yeah, and, and also... Of course, Christianity didn't get to the Holy Spirit until well after the Council of Nicaea yeah. in 325. Council of Nicaea basically talked about the nature of Jesus. Didn't formulate much of anything about the uh, Holy Spirit. And we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more with Dr. Gerald Dirks here on The Dean Show. He is the maintainer. Coming to the truth requires two things. It requires deep thinking that you've already done, but it requires another step and that's courage. If you have the truth, but you don't have courage, you won't stand up for the truth. And that's as good as standing up for falsehood. I, I would say this thing that you just told me, it's not in the scripture. And they would say, a marginal note added by a scribe, yeah, okay, we know that. And I'd be thinking, if you know this is not the Bible, why are you preaching it as if it's gospel truth? I started out actually uh, in high school, I was a born again Christian. Uh, I uh, accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, as we used to say, and I, I became very committed as an evangelical Christian, and I went off to Moody Bible Institute for college, which is a, a fundamentalist Bible college. After that, I went to Wheaton College, which is a liberal arts college. It, it's Billy Graham's alma mater. It's an evangelical school. So I had very solid evangelical Christian commitments. And uh, eventually, uh, I got a seminary degree, and I was a pastor of a Baptist church for, for a year. Um, but gradually, for a large number of reasons, I started to question some of the assumptions that I had about the faith. Uh, for a long time, I thought that the Bible was inspired and inerrant, that there were no mistakes in the Bible. But as I engaged in historical research on the Bible, as I was getting my PhD in New Testament studies at Princeton Theological Seminary, I started finding mistakes in the Bible. And uh, this, this cut away at my assumptions that the Bible was inerrant. And then I started questioning other parts of my faith. Is Jesus really divine? Uh, is there really a trinity? Back here on the Dean Show with Dr. Gerald Dirks, the key question, Jesus, peace be upon him, liar, lunatic, or Lord, none of the above. As we I'm stated, he is no way indeed not a liar. He is not a lunatic. And Lord, if you meant what we said earlier, a teacher, like all the messengers of God, they were teaching people how to worship God, then we agree. But if you say Lord divine, not at all. Exactly. Now tell us, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him shall have eternal life. The preacher's up on a podium. They're saying, look, look, look. And they're given this verse. What do you have to say? Well, um, first of all, begotten does not appear in all versions. No. Uh, some manuscripts delete the, the word begotten mm -hmm. uh, entirely. Um, I think we have to look contextually. You know, throughout the Bible, we see all sorts of people being referred to as son of God or child of God. Yeah. You know, um, David is referred to as son of God. Uh, Ephraim, uh, son of Joseph, peace be upon him. 
referred to as a child of God, etc. But we have numerous people throughout the Old Testament being referred to as son of God. The Israelite people as a whole referred to as the children of God. Basically, when you said someone was the son of God or the child of God, within the context of first century Palestine, you are basically saying there is a very pious and righteous man. Mm -hmm. And that's all you were saying. That's it. Yeah. That's in the context. Yeah. Historically. I think now, psychologically, uh, if we look at this from another totally different mm -hmm. perspective, mm -hmm. people attach themselves to, to, to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we love him. Oh, yes. And no Muslim, as I said earlier, is a Muslim unless he believes in Jesus. But people just wanting so much to believe this. They've been taught this. This has been instilled in them. And they develop you know, this relationship they feel with Jesus, and now they're deducing this verse, and no matter if we go on for another two hours or a day, and we'll hopefully for the sincere person, by now he's, he's got it, but the other person just holding on so tight to this, psychologically is there, you know, uh, from another perspective, why do you think people do this? Well, yeah, one, one thing that happens is how the Bible is translated. Yeah. You know, if you look in the new, most versions of the Bible, you look in the New Testament, if it's referring to Jesus as Son of God, like in the verse that we quoted earlier, you know, they put a capital S on Son. That capital S isn't in the Greek. Yeah. You know, that's something the translator's sticking in to make sure you interpret the passage a certain way. Yeah. But that's not actually in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, the Greek doesn't have capital lowercase distinctions. Yeah. What I'm thinking, look at this. You know, when you, you formed God into your mind and your life around that, now you've gotten comfortable. Mm -hmm. You're making your own way, you're doing your own thing, and this now, you got the J.C. Gold card, you get to throw everything on his back, which now, you know, it, it alleviates some of maybe the, the, set, the, the, the responsibility that you're supposed to have, you know, and, and you don't want to change your ways. I'm not going to get into nobody's heart, but you can see like somehow where, you know, this is convenient now. I mm -hmm. can do my own thing. You know, mm -hmm. God, I've made him into my mind how I feel that he should be, mm -hmm. and now I'm stuck on that. Can this be possibly something that's going on? Well, yeah, and, and there's, there's certainly that. There's also the aspect that, you know, um, there's this sense of assurance. Assurance, that's it. That uh, uh, tr uh, Trinitarian Christianity offers. You know, if you, if you believe in Jesus as the Son of God and accept the sacrifice he allegedly made for you on the mm -hmm. cross, then you are assured of salvation. Yes. Doesn't matter what else. Yeah. You know, you've got it made. This is your get out of hell card free. Yeah. To use it a paraphrase for Monopoly. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Islam doesn't offer that level of assurance. No. You know, uh, because Islam says, look, you have to watch how you live your life. Mm -hmm. You have to believe correctly that there's only one God. One God. And mm -hmm. worship that one God. But you have to live your life correctly. Yes. You cannot sin against God. You cannot sin against your fellow man. Yes. You know, you have to live correctly. This is all going to fit onto a scale on the day of judgment. Now, fortunately for all of us, God's mercy is also going to enter into that mm -hmm. equation. Otherwise, there'd be a lot of us in a lot of very bad shape. Yes. But uh, there is still this issue of accountability. Mm -hmm for one's life that's there in Islam. Definitely. So the question, can we say that it's been answered, liar, lunatic, or Lord? None of the above. None of the above. Yeah. But what? Mighty messenger of God? Can we Mighty say? messenger of God, etc. You, you had mentioned before, you know, teacher, master, etc. The et Messiah? Um, l l let me complete my thought and I'll get back to Messiah. Yeah. Uh, teacher, master, etc. It's interesting to see what that word actually is in the yeah. text. You know, and it's basically rabbi. Rabbi, teacher, yeah. rabbi. Yeah. yeah. You know, Jesus is being referred to as rabbi. Yeah. Uh, now, in terms of Messiah. Messiah, which means Christ also. Well, Christ is the Greek Greek uh, version of the Hebrew word Mashiach, yeah. or which we say Messiah. So we believe he was the Messiah? Yeah. Yeah, of course. The Quran tells us he's the Christ. The uh, word of God? Yeah, he's, he's the word of God, but in the word of God in the sense that we're told in the Quran that uh, in the miraculous creation of the virgin birth, God says, be, and, and it, it is. is. Done. Jesus is created in the, yeah. in the, the womb of Mary. Yes. Yeah. We're out of time. Uh, people, if they want to invite you to do a yeah. lecture, to, uh, you know, how can they get a hold of you? 
Uh, they can contact me at uh, dirksonlinebooks.com. Thank you once again for being with us here on the My show. pleasure, brother. I got almighty Allah reward you. And we got to answer another very, very important question. Today it was, was Jesus, peace be upon him, liar, lunatic, or Lord, and it's none of the above. He was indeed a mighty messenger of God who came with the same message that all the messengers of God taught to worship the one God, the one creator, and not what he created. Be thankful to him. Be grateful to him. And do all the good. Prove by action that you love God. Because talk is cheap. And you're going to be held accountable because there's a day of judgment. And if you do good, you strive for good, you'll have paradise. You'll get God's grace and God's mercy. But you've got to prove it through actions. You got to walk the walk, talk the talk, and continue to tune in every week here to the Dean Show to learn more. We'll see you next time. God willing, peace be unto you. Is the maintainer. One of the, the beautiful preserver. things about our religion of Islam is, is the, the emphasis on direct he ritual and prayer to God directly. Is the there is no intermediary. The lights will go on after the party, and the party will end. It's very simple and very clear. There are no superstitious rituals, no strange incantations. It's Time is running out. We might not make it till tomorrow. And this is something that we need to think about. No speech is better than to do that. To call people to Allah and to do the work. No speech is better. No, nothing is better than that. Is it true that if one person on the Allah giving you the ability to guide someone with Allah's permission, the Creator's permission, that is better than everything in this world? Better than the whole world and everything that's in it. In, in another narration, it's better than the best of wealth. But if we really felt that, Eddie, would we not be give, out giving dawah? And this is something that we encourage all the MSAs, all the dawah organizations, the masjids, to get this. We want to print more. We give these to the non-Muslims for free, for free, for free. We want our brothers in humanity to become our brothers in faith. It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me. Oh Allah, you see, oh Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your sinful slave, you're my loving Lord. I'm the one who runs away, oh Allah guide me.